I am super excited to bring you guys this episode with Danny Vega today. This is such an enjoyable episode. It is packed full of information and also wisdom. Um, if you don't follow Danny on Instagram, you got to get on that. Probably a lot of you do because he's really well known in the ketogenic space, especially in regards to carnivore. Um, he is dannyvega.ms on Instagram. I hope you also follow his wife, Maura. They share so much from a family perspective too. Um, their website is fatfueled.family. So be sure to follow them and check them out. They're awesome. So genuine, keep it real and tons of great information. Um, a little bit about Danny. So he's a native of Miami, Florida, and he got his bachelor's degree in political science from Columbia university in 2004, where he played football and was a three time Dean's list re recipient. Um, he got his master's of science in human performance from the university of Florida, where he worked with the national championship men's basketball team, along with the tennis and golf programs. And then he then went on to become the strength and conditioning coach um, for VCU basketball. That is um, Virginia Commonwealth University, which is my hometown. My mom actually went to VCU all while I was growing up. So I um, have a little connection there. And he helped the Rams to the 2007 conference champions, making it to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Um, he was a raw power lifter guys. His best were 640 pound squats and wraps, 610 pounds, raw, a 400 pound bench and a 700 pound deadlift. <laughs> I can't even imagine that is amazing. Um, he's competed in indoor rowing as well. So he is an athlete, um, and also a phenomenal coach. He just, to speak so much wisdom in this messages that he shares. So it's just so nice to get that combination of good information along with practical wisdom. He also works with people one-on-one. -on -one, so he's not just preaching theory. So good. So, so good. Um, he's talking about his new children's book he has coming out, which I cannot wait for. It's a mindset book. So anyway, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Here is Danny Vega. Okay. Before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, so we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know, we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, we sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with be the wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be the wellness is amazing. They are like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they've decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat, um, hosts and yeah, it's, it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be be the wellness. So B E E make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also, but B E E the wellness, be the wellness.com slash experiences slash higher. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website, all of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. There's an amazing yoga meditation, breath work facilitator, Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her. My like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on inside out health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating, um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So, um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going, um, for the next, uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess maybe it's a little less than that. By the time you hear this, that ends on August 8th at 8 PM. So eight, eight, eight. Okay. August 8th at 8 PM mountain time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, and yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a sh private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire.
So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right, guys, I got Danny, Mr. Danny Vega here. We've been trying to get this done for a minute. This is gonna be a fun conversation. <laughs> I'm yes. so excited to dig in. And I asked if we could start with carnivore. Cause a lot of you guys probably know Danny as I think you probably know Danny as the smart, jacked family man who does carnivore, but is open-minded to all sorts of approaches. And yeah, you're just a great educator. Um, but I want to talk about carnivore. We just talked about it a little before we started and your approach there, why you do it. And then I want to talk about carb ups, um, mm -hmm. what you've done in the past, what you're doing now and what your um, ideology about like the frequency of carb ups and all that goes. So because we'll start with carnivore. Why would people be interested in doing it if they don't know already? I think, I think it's one of those things that everybody should try, you know, just try it for a period. If you're a competitive person, then it's probably not a good thing to try it in any, anywhere near the time where you're going to compete because you will see a lot of issues. I noticed that with me, the difference between keto and carnivore was almost greater than the difference between just a standard diet and keto in so many areas. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was, uh, I feel like my insulin dropped even lower and my, and I just was dry, you know, like I, yeah. I really had to be even more focused on electrolytes and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing of course is, is, you know, you have changes to your gut microbiome, right. eating a decent amount of fiber, especially if you're someone who's, who's, considering, you know, everything they eat already, and they have a good amount of soluble fiber in their diet. Well, soluble fiber absorbs fluid, just like the colon absorbs fluid. And you know, the colon gets kind of lazy when, when you have a good amount of soluble fiber, and then you take that soluble fiber out. And it's no surprise that things just go right through, you know, right, and so right. part of that, besides changing, you know, the, the makeup of your gut bugs, is giving your colon a little bit of time to to start absorbing those fluids again i noticed for example i can't have spicy stuff if i'm going carnivore because it's not good it doesn't feel good <laughs> what happens danny just kidding <laughs> yeah <laughs> think for yourself what, what could possibly happen um but yeah like i i think um you know the other thing is just like i tell people with keto if you're trying to switch to carnivore you know i get it if you everybody almost almost everybody at all time wants to do something because they want to burn fat. And so mm -hmm. um, the first thing I would say is don't start by, you know, restricting your calories in the same way that you did before with mm -hmm. carnivore or keto. Um, because of what I noticed is like, my whole story getting into keto was that I had gotten injured my last powerlifting meet in 2016, I had to pull out of because I had a torn meniscus, mm -hmm. it was too much pain. And I went four months on a typical bodybuilding diet, got shredded, but I was down to 50 grams of fat at the end. And I just was miserable because I was binging over the weekends. And so I turned to keto 
as a way to just improve my quality of life and finally listen to my buddy Trevor, who had been bugging me about it for months. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what I noticed is that I was, I just changed the makeup of my same macro, not the same macros, but at least the same more or less calories. I was down to like 2,400 calories at 220, which is pretty darn low. Yeah. And, um, and it took me over that period of, of, a month, I had to increase my calories by 700 to 1000 just to stop the hemorrhaging of, of weight, you know, was just yeah. shredding up. So the first thing I would say is, you know, don't restrict yourself when you're trying it. Um, definitely try to um, get as much sodium as possible like you would with yeah. keto. Uh, but the reason why I say everybody should try it is because the best thing in my opinion about carnivore is it provides your body with this great reset. You lower your insulin, mm -hmm. you lower your inflammation. Mm -hmm. And just like when we get a food sensitivity test and, and then we fix our gut and then we find that we can eat other foods again, I think we can find the same thing with carnivore. You know, so you go carnivore, you start including other things again, and all of a sudden you see, wow, uh, I'm healed. You know, yeah. your body's so resilient. And right. you got to give it these breaks, whether it be fasting or carnivore. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I've just like, I'm very big on protein. And, you know, when you eat a carnivore diet, there's no way you're not going to eat like, at least for me, 30 to 40% protein. And right. I just find that's, I get the best satiety. I find that on a typical just maintenance phase, you know, I, it's so easy for me to maintain a healthy body weight with carnivore with no restriction. I actually just did 75 hard absolutely loved it recommend it to anybody who either feels in a slump or feels like they want to challenge themselves because when you start to do all these things and the the outcome is like if you don't do it on way one day that you got to start over it's a it's it's a big motivator and yeah. so i found that was so cool that you know really there's no requirement on what diet to follow you just got to follow a diet and stick to it no no cheating what we did what my wife and i what and i did was we decided the rule that we're going to add for this from a nutrition standpoint is that we're not going to eat after 8 p.m. We generally go to sleep around 10 or 10 30. So mm -hmm. we thought, you know what, this is a rule that we've always kind of had for ourselves, but never yeah. really followed it. Yeah. And so no restriction, probably eating 3,500 calories a day, got super lean. And yeah. so trying carnivore out, I would say give it, you know, four to six weeks and then step back and 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 just assess and look and and now you know okay wow there's another feather in my cap i could you know i could i could use this and pull it out later right um now when you start to talk about i always give this context because making broad statements like you can build muscle on keto you can build muscle on carnivore you can't make those statements without having context you know and so right. the first area of context that we need is how long have you been active and really consistently training? Right. Because if you're used to having a certain type of workout, you'd like to do, for example, bodybuilding. I use that one because it's just a lot of people love to bodybuild. You're resting 45 seconds. You're doing supersets. You're doing high reps. Yeah. You're getting a huge, crazy pump. Right. Um, if you train that way, especially in the beginning, before you're fat adapted, you're going to wreck yourself because yeah. you're going to see that you're, you're, you're trying to create all this, your body needs all this glucose for this yep. high intensity stuff. Yep. And then your body is going to start creating that itself, your body, your cortisol is going to jump up. And then you're going to keep training that way. And you have nothing to bring that cortisol down. And we know insulin, right. get an insulin bump, boom, cortisol comes down. So not saying that you don't, you can't train that way. But if you do train that way, let's say like what I've done in the past is Last year, I would do Thursday is my really high volume killer day. And then I did a carb up and it would just be awesome. It would just, right. everything looked better, felt better. Um, the Besides your training age, the other thing that I'll say is that, you know, even when you're fat adapted, it's very important, you know, when you get fat adapted, you unlock these special abilities, you know, the faster study, we know that, you know, yeah. you can operate at a higher percentage of your VO2 max using fat as energy. That's important mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. save our glycogen, we spare our glycogen. Right. And so, but what happens when we continually do these, these movements, these exercises over a period of time, there's going to be a point where your body can't keep up with its energy needs by beta oxidation, which is just taking fat and turning it into sugar. There's going to be a period there where, where it's probably not going to be able to keep up. 
And that's mm. different for everybody because for me, right. I'm very fast twitch dominant. So that, right. that, that's going to come quicker for me. But right. if you have, you know, you're made up of more oxidative fibers, you know, type two, um, then you might find that you can do that for longer. Um, but you, if you don't really know, it's better to err on the safe side, you know, make sure that, and, and what ends up happening that I think I love is because Bennett Pekulski and I did this in, in Keto Muscle Intelligence. We started running into this issue where we were saying, okay, the reps are six to eight, you know, most of the, a lot of the time. Yeah. The rest periods are two minutes and everybody's like, well, what am I doing this whole time? What are, it's too long. You know, it's not mm -hmm. enough reps, but like, mm -hmm. if you really take advantage of that and you're able to switch, switch it on and hit it hard during yep. that set, not think of anything else. Right. You get a better benefit. You do. Oh man. It, this is just music to my ears. I'm so <laughs> completely aligned on everything that you just said. And I love that you're bringing like an intelligent approach to it. And that's how I train people on keto too. And one thing that I like to, to tell them, I'm like, think about it. How did keto start? It started as a, as a diet, a therapeutic diet for the nervous system. So yeah. how do you want to train? You want to train your nervous system. Oh, yeah. You are optimizing your nervous system. And how do you train your nervous system? You hit it freaking hard and heavy hard. for lower reps and you create yeah. that stimulus and your nervous system needs time to recover. And yeah. that's so on keto. And I've run into the same things. Like, I don't want to rest for two minutes. I'm like, if you don't rest for two minutes, you're not going to be able to hit it hard on the next yeah. set because your nervous system needs that time to recover. And also like, as a side note to that is it's in general healthy for us to take this approach to training of I'm creating a stimulus in my body for change. And that's it. Like yeah. to me, that's the point of training. It's not like I'm going to run myself into the ground and I burn 700 calories in this session. That's not, <laughs> that's not it, you know? And I yeah. also really appreciate what you're saying about if you're training at these high intensities, high intensity interval training, go, go, go. You're basically making your body crave carbohydrates. And then you oh, add in gosh, that cortisol yeah. rise on top of it. And what does your body want to bring that down? Carbs. So it's like a combo of, oh, they're going to train like this. We need carbohydrates to fuel this kind of performance. Go eat carbohydrates is what your brain puts into your mind, you know, on autopilot. Yeah. And then on top of it, you're stressed like a mother. So yeah. you, you're craving that serotonin boost from the carbohydrates and it's, it's a recipe for disaster. So I love, I love what you're saying there. And I also love your, um, your, uh, message of just doing a reset. I mm -hmm. love this. It's ex exploring the capacity of our body and what it's able to do. And when you train your body to be able to do that, it's like, I look at it, you know, we use sports card analogies all the time and it's <laughs> overdone, but it's like having this like freaking amazing sports car and you just drive it 30 miles an hour all the time. It's like, yeah. <laughs> damn, dude, like it could do so much more than that. I and know. so going through these phases of like, let's see what this baby can do and doing yep. something like carnivore. That's why I put people on carnivore too, usually is as a reset, a gut healing, you know, and, and like you said, it doesn't mean you won't ever be able to eat any other foods ever again. But if you, especially if you have gut issues, holy, it is the most intelligent way to do a gut healing protocol, in my opinion, because you're getting so yeah. many other benefits at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, th th this, this, um, this whole thought that we, that we, we think so linearly, you know, beginning, yeah. to end, we got to throw that out of the window because everything in life is cycles, you know, like right. we have daily cycles, monthly cycles, right. seasonal cycles. And so the magic is, is with that variation between anabolic and, and catabolic, you know, throwing in the, the, the occasional extended fast, not always intermittent fasting because right somehow good to do you right know? arbitrary you rules outside of yourself that i always have to fit this little rule that i made for myself yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's like I, I understand because it's helpful especially because yeah if you're someone who never had rules and now you're like now you're terrified because you know this is what got you there and right. you're now you're afraid like for example i always use the crossfit analogy because a lot of people never worked out and then they did crossfit and awesome Right. But CrossFit's not the only way you can, you can right. do some powerlifting later. You can do bodybuilding type of stuff later. And you might find like my wife, like if she's going to do Karen, which is like 150 wall balls, she's not going to hit her glutes as hard. Right. Versus like saying, Hey, I'm going to focus on glutes today, you know, cause she's just trying to get it done. You know, there's the metabolic yeah. component. So that's the beauty is, is that variation in between both. And, you know, back to your point of like the way you train and training your nervous system. Um, I always forget the one that's that we're training when we do this type of training, but there's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which is basically like 
just filling those muscles up with with water and and it looks great and it gives you that full look but the type of hypertrophy that you train when you train your nervous system is not only good looks but you also get the functional strength that comes right. with it you know right. so why not be strong and look good Right. And then when you, if you decide to bring carbs back in later and you want to do more of that pump style workout, you actually have the nervous system strength. Your neurological connection is stronger to those muscles. So your results are going to go exponential. Yeah. So I love, I love your idea on phases. It's like focus, you know, focus on one thing at a time and it's fun. You know, like you mentioned 75 hard. And I, I definitely noticed with my like high achieve, especially my high achieving male clients, they love it because it's a freaking challenge. It probably (laughs) raises their testosterone because they're like, yeah, I'm winning. I'm doing something hard. The, the dopamine hit that you get every day right. in that list. You're just like, Oh, that feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you, some of us, some people need that, especially you are definitely dopamine dominant, like for sure. Like most high mm-hmm. achievers are like these dopamine dominant. They're, they're competitive. They like to win, you know, and yep. something like having something like that in your life is helpful. And so the thing I love about carnivore and what you're saying too, is that it's one thing I love about carnivore is it's so freaking simple. Yeah. It's like, don't only eat meat. Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, of yeah. course there's nuances with organ meats and electrolytes and things you need to understand. Yeah, but overall, you're right. It's meat. Does it it's meat? so simple. And so is 75 hard. It's so simple. That's, I think yeah. why it's been so successful. It's very clear. This is what I'm doing, you know? Um, and so I love, uh, your, your message also of not restricting calories at the same time. Cause if you're restricting everything, you're going to hate it. It's already restrictive. Yeah. You know, you're already yeah. only eating meat. So it's like one thing at a time. And that's what I've heard over and over from you and most of the carnivore, uh, teachers, educators is just like, you don't have to count your calories. You just only eat meat and you get full. Yep. I want to hit on protein with you for a second. Cause oh, you mentioned that. Yeah. Cause like, you know, <laughs> we have this whole gluconeogenesis, everyone's afraid of protein. I remember when I first got fit, I was eating high protein and it was like, not only did it totally transform my body, but it also, my mental health went up too. And I, now that I know more, it's like, yeah, cause you've got all the building blocks for dopamine, serotonin, in the, yep. in meat. And, um, people were telling me, Oh, make sure you don't eat too much protein. It's super bad for you. And now, of course, if you have like kidney disease or like some s- particular issue, it's something you can take a look at. But for most people, there's this fear of protein that I think still exists. We're kind of getting past it. Can you speak on your thoughts about protein and gluconeogenesis specifically in regards oh to keto and carnivore? Yeah. I mean, look, protein, the, the, the two or three different things that I always reference, one of them is Dr. Bickman. If you ever want to just learn about yeah. why you shouldn't be afraid of protein on a low carb diet, just search for Dr. Bickman, low carb Breckenridge 2017. Yep. I've watched that talks, one. It's yep. so good. You know, cause so you, you realize the role of, of insulin and, um, what's the, uh, glucagon. The role of insulin and glucagon and, and the interplay between that, you notice that you have a lot more leeway with a low carb diet because right. when you have protein and carbs together, the insulin and the mTOR response is crazy high. Right. If you're trying to get huge and put on muscle, that's a good thing. If you're trying to lose weight and heal yourself and not be in this anabolic, you know, right. you know, um, phase, state. whatever it's state, yeah. yeah, state, you, you know, you, 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 you don't want that. But so that's the one part. The other part, there's, um, I think there was something that came out the next year. I'm trying to think, but either way, protein and gluconeogenesis, it's a demand driven system. So I always use this analogy. It's like, you know, I'm driving down the street right now and, you know, my tank is full. And so, you know, I see a gas station and, and, and the gas is low, but I'm really not going to fill up my gas tank because I don't need it. And the same thing happens with gluconeogenesis. Like you're not, your body, it's very um, energy consuming to create sugar out of protein, you know, and your body's only going to do that because of the amount of ATP that it takes to do that. It's only going to do that if it has to, Yeah, you know, your your body, your brain, everything is like, it's not just like, uh uh-oh, we got protein here, time to turn it into sugar. Like that's a process, you know, and it happens in, you know, it happens after you run out of all of your glycogen reserves, all of your, um, you know, your fat that you can t- take that glycerol backbone and turn it into sugar. So mm-hmm. gluconeogenesis, it's like one of those things. It's like everything that, that comes out, we got to let the dust settle a little bit. Okay. Yeah. We, we hear about things like phytic acid. We hear about lectins. Right. We hear about all those things. Now let's let the dust settle and, <laughs> and let's just remember that, 
you were doing very well two weeks ago eating your food and then all of a sudden you heard of this one thing and then now you're like oh my gosh what am i doing this is terrible and it's like wait this is completely outside of you this is not what is your body telling you what is yes. you know what is your energy God. telling you how are your workouts going and so just keep that in mind always it's always mm -hmm. important to be honest with yourself um and just in general even if you're not on a ketogenic diet we just know that you can you can feed you've probably heard of these overfeeding studies you can feed these people you know an extra 400 calories in protein they don't gain weight you can right. you know you can eat 400 grams of protein and even people with kidney issues um this is something that what's his name up in washington um uh my gosh he, he did the book with will um the, he has oh, a oh uh mike muttle no, um, no, the doctor, uh, gosh, I'm sorry that I'm forgetting his name. We've had him on the, on both of my podcasts, but either way, he just talks about even with kidney disease, there's, there's doesn't seem to be a lot of, a lot mm. to fear with protein. And if you have your protein above 25%, 30%, you're going to be satiated. You're much less likely to overeat. Um, uh, and, and I, in the carnivore keto cut in the manuscript, I talk about this cause I remember hearing mm. when I got into this was like, fat is so filling. And that is filling if you come, if it is accompanying protein. Yeah. But if I have a 500 calorie coffee with 90, you know, whatever. Just butter. Yeah. Fat, an hour later, I can, I can go to town on anything. Totally. 500 calories from a steak. I can, I can, I'm good for, for several hours. Exactly. Yeah. I read a study that they, they isolated the macronutrients and fat was actually the least satiating of all when, when isolated by itself. And so I like to spread that message too. It is, it is satiating if it's not by itself. So I love, yeah. I love that message. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That, thanks for sharing that about the kidney issues yeah. too. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. What's his freaking name now? I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting it, but he does the protein to energy ratio. And that's okay. another interesting one because that's taking it to a really high level where like, if you are super obese and you just have so much body fat that you want to get yourself to a point where you want to use your body fat, yeah. what, what the protein to energy ratio is like one is one to one is optimal. It means that Let's say I have 250 grams of protein in a day. That's a thousand calories in protein. That means that whatever I have, whatever combination of fat and carbs, it can only equal to a thousand. So if I have 900 um, from 100 grams of fat, and then I only have 100, that's 25 carbs. For me, 250 protein, 100 fat, and 25 carbs, I will die. It's like the lowest. <laughs> It's yeah. so little calories, but for someone who's obese and who may not be training as hard, right. may work very, very well. Right. So, right. Yeah. Cause I've played around with like higher protein because I, I've noticed that there is this little sweet spot where you can get yourself in a bigger deficit if you increase the protein because you get satiation. Yeah. But I don't do well with it long-term and I don't, um, and it can't, yeah, it can't, I can't be for more than a couple of weeks. And even then I slowly got to back out of it because you know, there is a little bit of a rebound if I, if I don't bring the calories back in slowly the right way. Yeah. And I love that you're hitting on, it depends on what your body composition to start with is this satiating effect on keto. Cause I found that real quickly, like, cause when I started again, it was like gluconeogenesis, limit protein, high yeah. fat. And like here I am, I was like, like shredded oh. and lean and like, you know, I had a ton of muscle and I was like, dude, no, like I cannot do slimy. this. I don't know what people are talking about with this satiation thing is I'm freaking starving, you know? And yeah. I was eating like so much fat and I was actually gaining weight. And finally yeah. I was just like, I don't care. I need like, my body is like, you're going to eat protein girl right now, you know? And I'm like, well, you were, you were fat adapted too, right? Cause you were doing, and you've done a lot of endurance stuff, right? A lot of, I was just had qualified for the Boston marathon. So I was like super high level running, you know, training and running and also really into bodybuilding. So yeah, I was already fat adapted. So that protein thing, like that immediately and what you're saying is like, listen to your own body. I was just like, screw this. I'm eating more protein, but you would take these obese clients, you know, let's say maybe it's a old lady and she's not going to be really resistance training and she's doing keto therapeutically yeah. like she's and if she's obese she's not going to be that hungry on keto and she's not going to feel the need for this high protein thing like we do because we yep. need it for muscle recovery and to, to fuel all that um performance you know yep. so I, I love that you're sharing that and um i also would love if you could share your thoughts on carb ups and the approach that you've done in the past and now and your thoughts on carving up if you're carnivore keto 
Yeah, I mean, like if you're the first person I think of um, is is the hard gainer, you know, like I think the hard gainer, you have to understand someone like that, not only are they going to need more calories, but you know, if you're only, we have all these tools, you know, we have insulin, we have mTOR, we have growth hormone, you know, we have all these things that we can rely on. And then we realize that, you know, if, if I have, um, if I'm on a low insulin diet, then I'm relying on the leucine from the protein, yeah, which is good. You know, yeah. we've never really seen uh, like human trials, which I don't know what the benefit would be for someone to fund it beyond people like us who just are dying to know. Right. <laughs> but like, you know, something like, you know, you look at protein versus protein and carbs in like culture studies, and there's a massive difference between both, you know, those two. So if you're trying to put on muscle, protein by itself is going to help. Interestingly, of course, carbs by itself doesn't do anything. No, you know, carbs right. by itself, but carbs and protein, boom, huge yeah. insulin bump, huge mTOR bump. And so someone like that is not only going to start, well, I always tell them, if you're trying to put on weight, you got to start at least as your starting point, round figure 20 times your body weight. And then, you know, you, you, you're you going to probably want some more carbs, you know, and maybe yeah. you put them around your training window. Right. Um, if you're someone who is healthy and you're just trying to see what keto does for your brain right and you can you can do like i'll never forget this man dominic d'agostino told me this in like 2017 and he's like i am convinced that a low carb diet with intermittent fasting is more ketogenic than a ketogenic diet wow with, with no so i was like what do you mean by that he's like well if i fast 12 14 16 hours a day and I time it to where like I'm training at the end of my fast. And then after that fast, I bring some carbs in and I, and during that little window, it's more ketogenic than just eating ketogenic macros without a fast, even though the carbs mm -hmm. may be like at a hundred or 150. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, Hey, that's really awesome because that means that for me, <laughs> I can get the benefits of a post-workout right. carb and the protein and I do great. Um, so, and I remember Dominic saying too, he eats about 150 grams of carbs a day and he's in, for him. and he's in ketosis all the time. Right. You know, yeah, and, I, and I, I noticed that with Drew Manning too, like uh, he, he eats post-workout carbs. He is always testing. He's always in, he's always in ketosis. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 it was crazy. Like I started to see that I would, I would eat 350 carbs and I would be in ketosis the next day. And it was like all the time. Wow. And then I started to say, I had to like go out of my way so much because I'm like, guys, I just want everybody to know that this is not for everybody. Don't do what I do, you know, like, yeah. Because Cause you're like a massive muscly <laughs> machine, you know, like people yeah. are like, yeah, yeah, you can have 300 grams of carbs. I'm like, not till you earn it. Like Danny did. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I'm like my, my average steps are like 13, 14,000 on a regular day, you know, Same. I'm working out, I'm training. Right. And so, and I'm hitting it so hard. So um, what I have noticed I'm 40 years old. I look at videos of me in 2017. I'm like, dang, I can't do that. Not, not as much, you know, and mm -hmm, that's just like mm -hmm. four years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember last year, actually, yeah, it was, it was the beginning of 2020 before things got crazy. Ben uh, Pakulski was out of town for a month and uh, he came back and I wasn't eating carbs at the time. I was just executing better. And he looks back, look at him and he's like, man, you put on some muscle. And I, I just was so focused on execution. And mm -hmm. so at 40, the fact that I can just do these things like execute better, it's really helpful because I can't take, I, I, I know I can, but the downside of it is like, I, I have more inflammation. I have right. things that bother me more and hurt me and bug me right. um, that lowers my motivation. But right. like, and the same thing kind of happened um, last year where over a period of 12 weeks, I generally love to do carb ups in the summer, you know, like regular right. carb ups, you know, because it's just like I, I we're out in the sun more. It's yep. very hot here. I'm, I have a few genetic mutations that make me more prone to, to, to cramping. And so, mm -hmm. you know, everybody understands carbohydrates, you know, you right. can take one gram and you get three grams of fluid that you hold right. on to. So right. that helps this right. summer. Interestingly, like I was telling you before we got on the phone or we got on this call is that you know, I've only done one carb up all year and it wasn't even a real carb up. It was 150 grams, but it felt great. And now knowing what I know now, um, I always tell people, if you want to do this, 
I do suggest trying it like kind of regularly for a, a period, which I think the summer is the best time because generally yeah. that's when we're going to be able to eat more fruit anyways. Our microbiome is going to change to be yep. more beneficial to we're that. More insulin sensitive from all the vitamin D and the activity, oh, yeah. your activity, your baseline activity level oh, yeah. generally goes up as well. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're like somewhere freezing, you know, so, mm -hmm. uh, cause it's, you're just going to be out more in the summer. In fact, you're probably enjoy it more than me. Cause I'm spoiled. I have sun all yeah, year round. Right. So, um, so yeah, so definitely try it out and then just kind of see, like for me, I, the way I'm training now, it doesn't, I don't really need a lot of carbs and I feel really good with what I do. Like I do either meat, two big meals, like two to two and a half pound, like each meal is like one to one and a half pounds of meat. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll have either a keto brick, which is just gives yeah. me a quick thousand calories, which is awesome. Or what I've been obsessed with lately is I just make chaffles. It's literally yeah. like two eggs, a cup of mozzarella, and then I can put like, I can make it savory. I can make it sweet. Right. And generally eating around 3000 to 3,500 calories. And I feel great. Now, if you want to really see like how it feels to, to either you're, you're training for something or you're putting on, trying to put on muscle, then definitely, I think it's, it's great, especially if you're ketogenic all the time and you're fat adapted, you're going to see, you might get a ton of benefit from bringing those carbs in, you know, especially if you're a woman and you're lean. Um, I've noticed just with Maura, you know, she has a 25 day cycle. If she's strict carnivore all the year, that's miserable. You know, yeah. it's really like two and a half good weeks right. out of the month. Right. So she does a carb up like two days after ovulation and then maybe another one uh, the first day of her cycle. Yeah. Boom, 28 days. Nice. It's like nice. that, you know? That's, yeah, that's yeah. amazing feedback. And it, that kind of makes me think also what you were talking about, how you do split tests on your clients. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. and I was saying, like, I'm like, ah, I appreciate so much about Danny. He's working with people one on one because, as you put it, you're not stuck in theory, right? Like, yeah. you're actually looking, is this actually working for an individual? And what works for one person doesn't for another. Can you talk about your, you know, how you kind of do the split testing on refeeds with your clients? Yeah, especially if it's, if it's, if the person is trying to either get ready for a photo shoot or for like a show yeah. is, the only time that I only just do one is if the person says, you know what, I'm not interested in a carb up, um, then I'll say, okay, we're just going to try, yeah. you know, a fat refeed. So mm -hmm. what we, what we typically do on that day, um, if it's a fat refeed, both of them, it's going to be generally 30% more, 25 to 30% more calories. And we're going to add about, if, if it's a fat refeed, we're going to add about a thousand to 1500 milligrams of sodium to really just get everything just replete with sodium yeah, and calories. Right, right and smart. And, yeah, and then the next day they're going to they're going to hit a hard pump workout, you know? Mm. So, um so this person whether it's a fat or a carb refeed, then we are going to um at the end of the day take pictures. Yeah. And then the next morning take pictures so that we can see like how the person looks at the end of the day, how they look the next morning because that's that informs what I do on peak week. And then yeah. um, if it's a carb refeed, if it's a carb refeed, then it's, you know, the same thing, 25, probably closer to 25%. Um, and, and, and then just keep the fat lower, obviously. Um, but if it's just a carb up, mm -hmm. then I keep it isocaloric. And so if a person has, is eating 1600 calories, um, then when I do, when we do a carb up with that person, we're going to keep it at 1600. Right. So they might've been at 20 carbs before with 150 grams of fat. Now right. it's going to be like, you know, a hundred or 150 grams of carbs with, you know, 70 grams of fat. Right. Right. So that's important. Um, and that's cool. basically it. We just decide, you know, both of us say like, which one feels better, which one, you know, over the next couple of days, did you feel like your training was awesome and, and all those things. And yeah, it exactly. goes both ways. You know, a yeah. lot of the, some of the females do really well with these carb ups, you know, right. they, just, they tell me that they do well. And so, um, I've recently had like friends, like, like Robert Sykes, he's, he's big on only using fat. And I, at first was like, well, well, there's no, there's no studies that show that. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm that guy. I'm the guy. <laughs> and then I realized it's like, he's like, yeah, but if the, if the calories are higher, then that's really important for the metabolism. You know, it's not just, it's just because when we do refeeds and what the research shows is that the carbs 
they're always done with carbs. A refeed is done with carbs, right? right? right. So when we see what happens to leptin, what happens to all of the metabolism, it, you know, does that give it a little nice little boost so that metabolism is not down regulating itself from so much of a long period of in a, in a deficit, right? We don't, we haven't studied that, but the anecdotal right. evidence shows that if you just add the calories period, mm. that it's gonna, that it's gonna do well, just as well. Interesting. You know? Yeah. yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. And I, I just love that you're, you're constantly asking like, well, let's just see what works, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you're yeah. being open-minded about it and what, that what works for one person isn't going to work for every person, you know? And that's really like something I'm so passionate about, like sharing. Cause I, I, I'm sure like you, like I, my clients come to me and they're like, well, Dr. Fung said this, well, Dr. So-and-so said this, well, so-and-so said this, like, which one is it? And their heads are like spinning. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm like, well, how do you feel when you eat Greek yogurt? I feel freaking awesome when I eat Greek yogurt. Okay. Eat the so do you Greek think yogurt. maybe you should eat Greek yogurt? You know, <laughs> I always, a little side, side note with the Greek yogurt. Cause I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll put it in someone's uh, plan. Cause I find that that's a good, like mm -hmm. healthy, you know, indulgence. And Treat, they'll, be yeah. like, they'll be like, but there's 15 grams of carbs in it. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, my rule of thumb is cut out half of those because those those little bugs are eating that sugar totally. to stay alive and they count those carbs before the, the fermentation true so Good it's point. really only seven and a half carbs yeah. just you know, for what it's worth you know <laughs> love that love yeah. that love that um okay and then i was wondering if you could talk about how you're taking like a little phase right now and you're training to not be the man doing yeah. 500 oh. pound deadlifts and yeah and like you know and you're taking time <laughs> to do the stuff you hate so that you yeah. can do more of the stuff that you love. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I've just, I've just this year just been really focused on, on, on fixing all the things that I've um, that I've neglected for so long, you know, go figure the guy who lifts really heavy is built and moves like he lifts really heavy, <laughs> you know, so like yeah. you have all this compression of the spine from squatting and from deadlifts. And thank God I've never been really big injuries. I mean, I do have reconstruction on my right knee and my left meniscus is torn, but overall I'm pretty darn healthy until mm -hmm. I start moving and I start to see like all the imbalances and like, mm -hmm. you know, the body just finds a way mm -hmm. to get it done. Right. And then, you know, you start to see, oh crap, my left trap is bigger because of, you know, something that happens on my right hip. And it just right. like, goes like that, you know? Uh -huh. So I'm right now, as of, it's been about seven or eight weeks already, working twice a week with my buddy, Zach, um, doing like movement therapy. And it's basically like getting my knee flexion to where it needs to be. You know, I can't sit on my heels, you know, my, my quads, right. there's no excuse as and, and I know people with much bigger quads than I have. I have big legs, but there's no excuse that I can't sit on my ankles. There's no excuse that my dorsiflexion and my plantar flexion suck. My my spine's ability to twist and and to move independently right. is not good. And so it forces me into certain um, patterns that are not good, you know? Right, right. And so I'm working on, and as I work through it, I'll, I'll notice that like something's getting better and here pops up another thing. Um, so it's just that ability to always try to learn more because I've been, you know, I can go in there and I can do all the stuff, even functional stuff, mm -hmm. but doing the stuff that I'm doing now, you know, the no hand Turkish getups and the, you know, bottoms up stuff with kettlebells and all these stuff and Jefferson curls and all these things that are really, really good. And the payoff is similar to a payoff of, of any beginner, slow and never as fast as you want it to be, yeah. you know, never yeah. as never where you want to be like all the time, but, you know, <laughs> and I have to mentally prepare before every session. Right. You don't you know, get the dopamine hit of like, yeah. <laughs> no. And it's like, it's fewer and farther between like those, those little, yes. He's like, oh man, look, you got like within an inch of your heels that time, you know? Like, like, <laughs> you're like yeah, yeah. And I, I love yeah. that you're talking about sitting on your ankles. Cause that's something that I, <laughs> when I used to train people in person, especially male clients, oh. it was so fun because if you just will sit in a deep squat, you can oh, yeah. enhance your mobility so much from just being yeah. able to stay there for a few minutes. 
So yeah. I would do that with my, with my male clients. Cause never, I never had a male <laughs> client who could just do it the first time. Like we always had to support at first, hold a kettlebell or something to offset the balance. Yeah. That's most, that's me most like now I'm at a point <laughs> where I, I can just put my hands out and I can squat and hold it. Right. But even then, if I don't have the kettlebell to counterbalance, then my, my lumbar and my sacrum start to curve, curve a little bit. Right. So when I do get that kettlebell, I get to push on my ankles, push them out and right. I can stand taller. Yes. But it's all a, it's all a continuum. It's you know? a process. Yeah. And I used to, I would, um, hold conversations with my clients during that time. And it was so funny. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to distract them so they can hold it longer. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, that's crazy. So what'd she say? And that you can just see them being like, Oh, um, oh. and they're like, <laughs> they're like trying to hold their shit together. <laughs> that's how I remember. I would do the same thing with people when they would, when they would do like, you know, planks for the first time. And I'd be like, yeah. go ahead and tell me the alphabet, you know, cause they're always like, <laughs> everybody wants to like, Cause you're thinking to yourself, this is so hard. And then you make it so hard and your face tells you it's hard. And then like, even me, like I notice that I start to grimace and stuff and I'm like, man, let me just switch my face. All of a sudden you calm yeah. your face down and Oh, totally. go, go figure. You're not fighting your own body anymore. That's right. Exactly. It's just, it's that stoicism that you go into. And I, I yeah. really kind of learned that in cold showers. Cause when I first started oh, doing yeah. them, I was like, Oh, yeah. oh, my kids are like, mom, are you taking a cold shower? <laughs> you know, I'm like so <laughs> yeah. loud and now it's, and so if you can like switch your mindset out of that panic mode, it, it kind of reminds me of the Navy SEALs talk about how, when you think you're tapped out, you're only at 40%, oh, right? And that has helped yeah. me so much, but that goes with this stuff too. Like the, oh, yeah. the deep work, you know, even yoga can be what you're saying to me. Like, I'm like freaking panicking. Cause I'm like, shit, I can't do this anymore. And I'm like, nope. And it's, it's really gaining control over your nervous system. Your yeah, own being able response. to switch between parasympathetic and sympathetic. Mm -hmm. It's then you huge. start to see, oh, wow, I'm stressed right now. Let me breathe. Oh, my gosh, look right. at that. I can yeah. get out of it. Yeah, choosing. It's like, no, you're fine. Learning how to control that stress response. But anyway, I appreciate you sharing that you're doing that because, uh, you know, I just had a client yesterday. I was like, come back after you do your physical therapy. So he's just going with it straight physical therapy for a few months, you know? Good. So it's so important because I can get him such better results after that. You know, yep. it's like, take yep. that time, that little bit of pause. So everything else you do is better. You know, um, 100%. it's kind of goes along with a lot like, that you've been talking about today with carnivore to, um, you know, having these phases where we pause for a second. And so we can, the rest of our lives can be more enjoyable, get better results. You know, but yeah. a lot of people don't want to pause and do that. Okay. Yep. Before we wrap up, I want to hit on two things. First, I wanted to hit on your upcoming book. Can you share? Oh yeah. Yeah. So excited. So, um, it's called unexplainable adventures, the power of influence. It's a children's book. And it started with my buddy, Adrian calling me last November and just being like, Hey man, you're tapped in with your kids. Like, let me know, like, is there anything like this available? He's like, I'm looking to write a book on, you know, personal development for kids. Yes. And I was Thank like, God. no. Yeah. I was like, there's nothing. There's the Tuttle Twins is awesome. It's a series, but they do economics and philosophy and yeah. they just take, they take these bigger adult books and they turn them into storybooks, but nobody has done that with personal development. Yeah. I have like the seven habits of highly effective kids, but, and that's the like only one I've been able to yeah. find. And it's kind but of is that cheesy. Us, that, I didn't even know that. That So he, that's his son who wrote that, right? Did his son write that? Or I don't did, know. was it still him? Stephen Covey? I don't know. I can't, I don't know. Yeah. But, but there's not a lot. And I'm, I'm always looking for this. Cause I'm like, dude, I'm helping adults with this. And what are we doing constantly? <laughs> We're going back to their childhood, yeah. right. And rewiring all these patterns that they didn't learn in childhood. So I'm like, yep. dude, if I can just get my kids off on the right foot now and ingrain these patterns when their neural pathways are so easily forged, yep. how much better will their adult life be? They don't have to go backwards. So this yeah. is super exciting that you're doing doing this. Yeah, so the, and, sorry, go, ahead, go yeah. ahead. I was just gonna say unexplainable adventures is a series, right? And this first yep. one is called the power of influence. Yeah. And, nice. and like uh, you, you nailed it. Like, I'm so excited for the parents to do this with the kid because yeah. like the parents are going to learn so much in a totally. non-threatening environment totally. where we're not telling them that they need to change, but they're realizing like, Oh crap, I should do that. I should remember people's names. I should, yeah. I should like always realize that I don't need to be right all the time. I should realize that right. sometimes nobody wins in a, in an argument, you know? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. like, um, and so it, the, the book is basically the first in a series and um, the main character, Memphis, he contracts this virus, go figure a virus, right? Um, and he gets this 
power, the superpower where he can read minds. And that's only the beginning. Um, and there's this mentor character, um, Dr. Libertas. And then there's, you know, he has like, the cool thing was like this creative writing aspect, which was like taking all these mentors and people in my life who, who have made such an impact and putting them, inserting them as characters. And nice. we created an appendix oh. where, where it shows like, where did this name come from? Where, what's the oh, origin cool. of this? Um, and then we have a workbook, of course, where the workbook is going to give, you know, a, a list of historical characters in the book. What's the significance? Mm -hmm. What do you think, you know, their significance would be in your life? Um, word Huge. search, crossword puzzles, cool. maze, Mad Libs, um, all Very of that, cool. by the way, was so freaking cool to do, like make my own word search, make my own this, that. Yeah. Um, and, and so anyways, when, when we first told me about it, I was like, I was like, no, man, there's nothing. And, and here's what you should do. And you should do this and this. And I'm super excited for him. And he's like, wait a second, you want to write this with me? And I was like, oh, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> and then we would go back and forth. And it was like this really cool, like I would go into the word doc or, you know, the Google doc and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Do, 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 you know, yeah. and we'd go back and forth and. Um, now we're at the point where the book has been done since basically March, you know, so we've had to find illustrators where they're doing, you know, specific amount of which, of course, we get. That's another thing. Coloring pages, because even the parents are going to love the coloring pages in the yeah. workbook. Um, and um, and just like what what else? That's that's basically it. Just going through the self-publishing process now. We, you know, based on I told you experience that I had, I was like, you know what? It's it's cool. I will self-publish, and if this does well enough, someone's gonna gonna be bound to pick it up, and we re oh, yeah. release it under a publisher. So that's it. it. We're, we're we're in that process now. It's gonna be huge, and I, I love what you're saying about the parents learning because I definitely noticed that just from that Seven Habits book. Like it, that, those lessons stuck with me so much. And I know you yeah. and I are probably I'm so grateful for what I do for a living because I'm always teaching. That one learn. of the most powerful ways to learn is teaching, and so 100%. it provides an opportunity for parents to do that, and they get their little gold star of like I'm doing something good with my kids. But yeah. they're also massively improving their own mindset and how they're showing yeah. up in life. So it's that's. And really like you said, cool. not like I said, not threatened, like in, not in a threatening right. way where they feel like someone's telling them they need to change. But they're like, oh, I right. learned this. Nobody needs to know. I need to. I just learned it right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's yeah. not it's not pressure. It's not like, OK, yeah. sit down to your program, be better. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's in a non pressuring environment. So that is super exciting. And then the last thing is you have you're in the works of building something new that do you are yeah. you good to talk about this? The, yeah, yeah. The meals, definitely. muscles, mindset. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just like, I, I realized like I have this, like the carnivore keto cut so successful, like thousands and thousands of people, all these different countries have done it and mm -hmm. it's great, but it's like, I want that thing. That's like, that combines it all. Yeah. And yep. it started with like, is this a program? And then it, it actually, it, it morphed into what it is now. It's meals, muscles, and mindset. And um, we're going to have this app and we're going to have all these different levels, like for as low as like, I think like 20 bucks a month, people will come in and they will be getting, you know, like just learning like how to do yeah. the meals part. And the meals yeah. part is, you know, it's going to, it's going to encompass everything from low carb to paleo to keto to carnivore, all of those things. And, and people will understand They'll have periods in each phase and a journal to where they can say, yeah. this is what works best for me at maintenance, or this is what works best. And just being able to say and having a mindful approach when you try something right. with a diet, you'll always be able to come back to that at any time, right? Yep. yep. So, but what really gets me excited, I think, is just having the app because the app has, you know, if I give you a workout as it is now, it's like I have a Vimeo. You got to go to the Vimeo and go mm -hmm. look, look mm -hmm. it up. Now it's like, okay, what do I got today? Okay, this right. is this, and this is the video for it. Right. So um, oh, yeah. we're, we're like about three months into it with what we're writing. And we, we said to ourselves, once we're six months in, then we're going to, now it's going to be time to record five million videos. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and there's going to there. be, oh my gosh, you know how it is like days <laughs> of several hour recording sessions yeah um, and you're just doing like one or two sets of everything and you're like you don't yeah. have to work out this is your workout oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. at least you're a guy like i have to like have my hair done and a makeup oh, yeah. artist and i all know mara stuff. that's mara whenever she's like is there a video on this podcast i'm like yeah of course why she's like well you know i need to get ready for that I was yeah like, 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I, I always laugh at my workout videos. My hair is down and stuff. I'm like, I don't work out like that. I'm like grubby <laughs> AF when I that'll work be out. So, but... <laughs> that'll be so hot. I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Well, I'm so excited to see that come out. I'm super excited about your book. And thank you for always Same just for being in a high degree of professionalism to the industry. I think so many people really trust you and with reason. Thank so you. anyway, thank you, Danny. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks and we'll, guys, me. we'll link up everything that we possibly can, um, in the, in the show notes. And of course, you know, you can follow Danny. Is it Danny Vega MS? What's your Danny Instagram? Danny Vega dot MS. Yep. Dot MS. Yeah. Yep. Make sure you follow him on Instagram because it's great. And then Maura of course, as well. And their kids and all their adventures. It's just, oh, you guys would just bring <laughs> a lot of joy to the industry. So appreciate that. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, Thanks Danny.